Hi and uh, welcome to FSTeric and I'm going to do a bit of a sort of a behind the scenes today because I'm going to show you how to set up the audio and the video, or at least how I do it anyway. Um, first of all let's have a look at the video. What I'm using, you can see it flashing away down here, is an Ava Media um, card and uh, I have got it set up to mirror my screen one. So if we go to the screen resolution which is a Windows thing you can see here I've got 1920 by 1080 now that's half the or, or a quarter if you like of the resolution that my monitors can display because they're at 3940 and uh, 2160 at the moment but the Ava Media can only record at uh, half that uh, resolution um, which is quarter of the pixels and I've got it mirroring um, monitor number two which is the one that you can see and I've got another monitor over to the left here which you can't see so that's what you're looking at to duplicate the desktop um, on on monitors uh, one and two or whichever whichever monitor you want to duplicate on your Ava Media card. So that's the and now this is my um, recording folder. So this is this uh, recording going in in real time. And uh, another tip is when you finish recording, if it's if it looks like that, then it's okay to open. If it looks like that, it means it's it's still being recorded, and you have to give it at least sort of five or ten seconds after you've pressed the stop button to dump the last bit of the recording to encode it and dump it. Um, in the past, I'll just tell you a few of the things that go wrong with this. In the past, what I've done is I like recorded about an hour's worth of video, and um, stopped it, and then immediately double clicked on this to open it, and the mere act of opening it stops it being finalised, and so you lose all that or lose all that video. And the other thing that I did, uh, I think, for a couple of videos ago, was to put it onto my C drive, which is um, an SSD, and uh, I just basically ran out of space. You, you tend to assume that you've got, you know, all the space in the world, but um, of course you don't. Uh, you you have to record these on a hard drive, and it doesn't matter too much because speed. Certainly, when you're editing, it's nice to have it on an SSD. You could perhaps drag it over to your SSD to edit it. But when you're recording it, you need need to have it on a like a terabyte drive or something so that you you've got all the space. Now the other thing you've got to set up properly is the audio. Um, and let's just uh, say no to that. And what I what I'm look what you're looking at now is Adobe Audition, which is a sound recording software. And I'm going to just press record. And you don't want um, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, I'm not recording this from here. This is I'm just using this to check the levels, and you can see here that the the levels are pretty good. Um, you don't have to subscribe to Adobe CS whatever to do this. You could do this with Audacity, which is a free program, does exactly the same thing. Just check that your recording is is uh, coming in. That you know that that something's being. You know the, the, your your. Uh, you are recording something you're just not talking into thin air so and here you can see the signals coming through and the other thing is that there are no horizontal lines on this this is the waveform and if you get a something like a mixer board set up wrong and I've got a Xenix 802 um, and you get feedback then they show up as uh, horizontal lines in the signal which are um, which you can't always hear through the headphones but uh, will come out on the recording so I uh, always like to check that the levels are about right and um, I've got uh, no no horizontal lines here. So, And once you've done that then we don't need this anymore so I can shut this down. So don't, don't save that. So having said that, so that's the video and the sound setup so let's get into um, the plane and I'm going to show you something um, again which I haven't demonstrated on the plane before which is checklists. I've been experimenting a bit with checklists um, while that's starting up. What I'll do is I'll um, it sort of does it commandeers the screen for a bit. Oh that's a nuisance. Was it saying it can't find my aircraft? Understood. Haven't seen that error before. Oh, 
Well, it's taking a long time to start up, and in view of that error message about not finding the plane, I'm going to press Control Alt Delete, and um, here we are. Look, and this is what you find behind the scenes. It's uh, it's annoying, isn't it? That's a shame. What a shame. TMF running. Oh, is that the uh, yeah? That's sorry. That's just that directory. So you know, WTF happened there. Who knows? Let's try again, shall we? Okay, understood. Can't find the plane. Still, it's got past that now. It's reading new scenery files. I can hear some disk activity, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. No, it's not going to do anything, is it? Not responding. Well. It's using quite a bit of the CPU, so it does seem to be doing something. Not responding doesn't mean broken, it just means, there we are, just means too busy to uh, talk to the um, CPU. So it's obviously, it's loaded me in a Cessna, hasn't it? Now, next problem. I think I'm at South End. I should have um, some sort of um, view from my joystick. But my joystick is not working, so I'm mm. going to unplug and replug in the joystick. Now we've got, there we are, so now the joystick's working. Now let's see if we can find my plane, aircraft, open aircraft. Coronado, Coronado, open aircraft. Oh, this is useful because um, all this sort of troubleshooting is um, something that I suppose everybody may have to go through at some point in time. I mean, if getting a joystick working is just a matter of unplugging it and plugging it back in again, it's better to know that, isn't it, than, than that, you know, sort of reinstall Windows every time. Right, and there's the aircraft back. So, that's better. So, we've got the video recording, we've got the sound recording, we've got the X-plane working, we've got the joystick working. Okay. What I've done is I've navigated to the directory that you need to have your checklists in. So and it's the drive on which you store your data program files x86 uh, because steam is a 32-bit application so steam steam apps common xplane 10 okay and that's basically the xplane 10 folder and if you want to put a checklist in it then that's where you put it and this is the checklist here so let's open it with um, a notepad application and here it is now this this one has got numbers in it because and I don't think it's the one I'm using at the moment so let's just close that down no numbers here we are and open that here we go so this is the one uh, that I've got I've got here and and as you can see it's extremely long I haven't even managed to finish it yet because I'm you know life is too short so uh, but I may post the first bit which I've done which is about you know getting getting up to um, take off and I'll show you how to use this so let's go back to the plane run full screen resolution just press enter to get rid of that go to special go to 
open checklist for use not open text file for viewing open checklist for use give it a second and here well here we are here's the explain folder and so we want checklist no nums incidentally if you do if you do create a new one just rescan this click open and here we are before start checklist so let's go through it and now what I've done is I have programmed keys the some some keys to go through this backwards and forwards and I'll show you how to do that it's uh, joystick and equipment I think keys and Not sure this is how I did it. Oh yes, here we go. Right down the bottom, you've got SDNA. Now these are the keys that you'll be used to for all your first-person shooters: W forward, A left, D right, S back. But in fact, what I've done is I've put S to toggle it on and off, and A and D to go backwards and forwards. Yeah, left and right. So uh, the way and the way you do it is you just click on, uh, let's say S and it's uh, here we are toggle checklist selected in special under operations okay and the other ones are next item and, and previous item so that's how you do that so I can turn the checklist on and off with S and I can do D to go to the next item Parking brake set. so and you'll notice it reads it to you which I it doesn't really explicitly say in the instructions it it does that but in fact it does and and it does it pretty well it, apart from it has a bit of trouble with the word as which it pronounces as 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 we'll find out later so let's have a quick go through the checklist shall we now before i'm going to do that i'm going i want to fly from south end to um where should we go south end to i don't know uh south end to Gibraltar. I think that's where we were going, isn't it? So, let's go to our favourite uh, online flight planner. Which they've helpfully named online flight planner. So I'm going to go to online flight planner, which is my favorite online flight planner. And we've checked FMS, which is the X-Plane flight management system. So, and also PDF, so you can print it out if you want to. And we are departing from Echo Golf Mike Charlie, which is South End Airport. And we want to go to Gibraltar. Uh, it doesn't like Gibraltar, so let's do a search for Gibraltar ICAO and the ICAO is Lima X-ray GB Lima X-ray GB Gibraltar Airport there we go so the minimum flight level is going to be flight level 240 maximum is probably about flight level 280 the aircraft the closest we've got is the king air 350 we don't use sids and stars i'm not really worried about um nats which are um warnings um, national air transportation warnings you know balloons and things like that and here is our flight plan and there is the map of the flight plan so we should be able to do that so we'll go to the files it's generating the files and we're going to download that one that's going to be our flight plan now here I've got a link to my FS my FMS plans 
and you can see where they are located they're in the drive on which you've stored your spit steam 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 amps common x plane 10 output so they're located in the output directory which is underneath the x plane 10 folder which is so it's the one below where we were with the checklist so just double click on that and we can just click save and that puts that straight into the um, into the flight plan folder so we'll come to that in a minute so um, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to uh, load the current uh, real world weather so I've downloaded it now you may have done it already yeah which looks pretty good doesn't it and we are at Mike Charlie which is good um, so let's run through the checklist so here we go I'm going to remove the yoke just to make things a bit easier so parking brake set this is the parking brake so you, you can pull that out and it's set and I've got the trigger on the joystick so that uh, it's set to work the brakes and if I pull the trigger you'll see it actually releases the parking brake so it works the brakes and but working the brakes also releases the parking brake the oxygen system ready oxygen system well there's not much to control about the oxygen system we'll check the levels later pilot instrument panel checks these are the, this is the pilot instrument panel so we're going into those checks SLB mode. the compass control slave mode again i don't think that's featured switch on. the prop sync switch is is featured and that's this switch here so let's switch that on pilot clock check and set uh, the pilot's clock is on the uh, yoke and it doesn't come on until the electrics come on unlike the uh, co-pilot's clock which is is on and, and, and can be checked pilot sub -panel so here's the pilot sub panel so I think I can zoom one of these is the pilot sub panel oh. does it reset all my views oh it has isn't it reset all my views what a pain never mind never mind what we can do we can we can make a point now if I press control and then keypad 4 that gives me a uh, automatically brings me into that view again so sub panel checks mic select switch normal mic select switch is on normal yeah anti -ice on. engine anti ice is on that's these two. Pilot air control as required. Pilot air control. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want much of a breeze, so I'm going to leave that Defrost off. Defrost air control as required. Defrost again. Landing we're not worried about. Landing air control is down. This is the relay circuit breaker here, which I don't think All pops other out. Switches off. All other switches off and uh, down is off. So uh, yeah, is that off? That's a transient switch. So. Uh, Avionics panel switches AF required. Avionics panel. Uh, I'm going to have to set up another one of my sort of favourite view, which is which is something like that, and can assign that to Control Seven. Avionics panel. Well, everything else, you know, nothing. Got console checks. Nothing's turned on yet, is it? The console is this thing down here. Power levers idle. Power levers are idle. That's these two here. Prop levers fine or feather if slippery. Prop levels are fine, but if it's if you're on gravel or ice, you can pull them right back so that so that you literally get no forward um, pulling at all from the prop levers. Condition levers fuel cut off. These are the condition levers, uh, and they're on the fuel cutoff. Trim set. Trim, uh, you can you can adjust the trim, but uh, probably in in practice, what you would do on a plane is you would adjust the trim for um, takeoff, and I think it's here is probably the the relevant. I'll I'll set it to for neutral for takeoff. Pedestal check. Pedestal checks now. Where's the pedestal? The pedestal's down here. The AFI power switches off. AFI power switches are off. And uh, what did we say down? 
down is off, isn't it? So that's the EFS. So we'll turn the power switch off. AP flash trim power switch off. The have we got a trim? Elevator trim. That's the autopilot. Yes, and I suppose in the elevator trim power switch is Cabin off. Press switch press. Cabin pressure switch to pressure. There's the cabin pressure switch. Rudder boost switch on. Rudder boost switch on. Pressurization controller set. Pressurization controller set. Well, we, we are going to um, go to 24,000. And they like you to set it for one more than uh, you're going to go to. So that's I'm going to set it for 25. Co-pilot's instrument panel check. Co-pilot's instrument panel. Right. Let's. Um, have we got a co-pilot's? No. They've got these wing views for some reason. So let's go there, and I'm pressing. Um, I'm going to press right cursor just to take us across to the, and then I'm going to look down a bit, and that should cover us for all of the co-pilot. And then I'm going to program that in as um, Control Nine on the keypad, so we can go to that if we need to. So let's get just get rid of the yoke. Compass Control SLV. Compass control slaved. Yes, as I say, it's not implemented. Co-pilot's check. Co -pilot's check. Co -pilot's right, yeah. I assume checks. that's all right. Sub-panel checks. So here's a sub-panel. Cabin signs. No smoke. Fasten safety belts. No smoke and fasten safety belts. That's up. No smoking and fasten safety belts up. Just fasten safety belts is down and in the, in the middle is off. So, and you get an up and down arrow and and a hand. So that's hand puts it in the middle, and then the down arrow takes it the rest of the way. So we'll have those up. Vent blower medium. Vent blower to medium. Here's the vent blower. So that's got an up and a down. So I presume middle is Vent medium. Blower off. Aft blower off. There's the aft blower down there. That's off. Bleed air valve switches E and V I are off. Uh, the bleed air. Oh, these are the bleed air valves, and we want those on environment and off, not instruments and environment off. Cabin temp mode control off. Okay, this is the cabin temperature control mode, and I think you have to go up to turn it cabin off. Flash cockpit air control shut. Cabin air control shut. Yeah, I think that's shut, isn't it? Oh no, this is this is sorry, this is the cabin. This is the cabin cockpit co -pilot uh, shut. Co-pilot co can set select the switch normal. how much he wants, how much air he wants on his legs. Uh, Mike can Mike uh, switch the normal. Oxygen pressure fifteen hundred pounds. Oxygen pressure is down here, and uh, actually, it's reset the Hobbs meter, isn't it? As far as the um, yeah, as far as the flying goes. So so we're on a brand new plane again. Okay, okay. Never turn down a new plane. Circuit breaker panel check. Circuit breaker panel. Well, they don't pop out. So um, I mean, they might pop out, but I've never seen one pop out. So static air source normal. This is the static air source, and um, there we are. You can see um, pilots, uh, pilots static air source, and we've got normal and alternate, um, and it's sort of um, got this thing that's making sure it stays on normal in fact you can't switch this but um, if your normal static air source got blocked up then you would you can there is an alternate uh, source for static air so by unhooking this from the sort of the red thing and and it's very very rare that you'd want to do that which is why they've got it sort of all caged up like that you can change the um, static air source but they will want it in normal which is where it is complete. Battery on. So that's the co-pilot checks complete. So now what we can do, we can go down to the now. Now we're going to start the um, startup procedure. So battery on. Overhead panel lights AS required. Overhead panel lights <laughs> AS required. Uh, we have those on. Um, exterior lights beacon on others AS required. Exterior lights. They're all. They're all this on this panel down here. Um, we want to turn the beacon on and the rest of them we can leave off for the time being um, we'll, well, the beacon alerts everyone to the fact that we're going to start the engine number two engine start so this is the number two engine start checklist propellers are clear. Uh, the propellers are numbered 
Oh, what have I done there? Propellers are numbered uh, one one onwards. So that's number uh, looking from the pilot's point of view. So that's number one. So that's number two. So we just check that the area is clear. Ignition and engine start switch on. And we put the ignition, ignition and engine start on. And associated fuel press annunciator should extinguish. So it's telling us that uh, we should have a some annunciators on here. Uh, probably don't work entirely according to plan. And at 12% N1, which we're already at 27, um, they're telling us just to move this to low idle. Yeah, we haven't got much going on there. No, I was fully expecting that prop to start up, so I don't know what's going on. So what I'm going to do is um, move that back and turn the starter off. Hmm. I tear less than 1,000 C. Check 12 ignition yeah, so and mind engine start switch on. Ignition on annunciator illuminates and associated fuel press annunciator should extinguish. Well, I could try it the other way around. Let's try it on uh, number one. So there we go. Give it some fuel. This computer is pretty symmetrical, so I should imagine if it's not going to start on uh, on engine one, it's not going to start on engine two. Or two, you're not going to start on two, it won't start on one. No. Right, okay. What you can do uh, under circumstances like this is go to failures, equipment failures. Now we, we've got everything always working here. Um, but that doesn't mean that everything always works. Oh, it says allow random failures. So it's a brand new aircraft, so I suppose in fact we could have a failure. It's probably a good time to have a failure on a brand new aircraft because um, if they may have put something together back to front. So I'm just going to click reset all systems to operational and then uh, try that again uh, in the hope that it's uh, just a random bug. So we're watching this to go up to 12, and when we go up to 12, we give it some fuel. Oh, 20. I'm turning the right thing on, ignition and engine start. Success. So let's work the checklist. I'll just turn the starter off. We've got to check that you don't get an overheat on the uh, internal turbine temperatures. The N1 here is at uh, 61%. Oil pressure above 65. pressure's down here, which is uh, still it's on the low side, but um, it's above uh, 60, which is the the red line, lower red line. So the uh, we're looking for the ITT increasing, and uh, we can turn the starter off once we've got 50% N1. It tells you to to um, push the condition lever forwards, which is a, is a sort of a idling fuel control. It doesn't give the engines as much fuel as the the main throttles. And again, we're we're monitoring the in, internal uh, turbine temperatures. Not that they really do much. 
turned the generator on for the engine we started and uh, so we're starting to get some electricity we're not just running on the battery now check the DC load is up here is at 20% uh, so we don't we're not really worried uh, about overloading and we're going to do a battery this is a battery start on the second engine although in, in effect it's a start on the generator one thing I haven't done is loaded enough fuel so um, while that engine is warming up I'm just going to go to weight and fuel and set it to now what have we got central gravity spot on empty weight we don't really adjust payload weight is is really only me um, and I don't weigh 400 pounds in case you want to put any smart comments in I'm just going to turn the computer down a bit that's another tip if you're flying you'll find that the people listening to the video will find the engine much louder than you will through the through your headphones so I'm, I'm going to put some more fuel on and uh, just adjust it so we've got a green bar there so we're about 400 pounds below maximum gross weight and there we are well well over stocked on the fuel uh, but if we're going all the way to Gibraltar then uh, that's what you want isn't it so second engine start just finish this off check the generator load isn't more than 50 percent because we don't want to um, overload the generator check the propeller area is clear which it is so it's that's odd you see because I wonder if that's been updated because normally when you put the ignition and engine start it says ignition and engine start switch on but that's the engine auto ignition and by putting this on always turn that on so remember we're looking for 12 percent once we've got 12 percent we go to low idle so now we're starting to get a, some activity from the engine and we've got 61% at 61% we could turn off the starter so 12% we, we went into low idle didn't we check we don't have an overheat N1 61% oil pressure is um, here which again is, is fine in the orange uh, once we got 50% we turned off the starter and we want the um, other condition lever to go up to high which will, should put this up to 69.9 turn the generator on for engine 1 now uh, we're going to cabin mode temperature which I'll, I'll put on to I'll put on to also the inverter is down here and we've got two positions for that number one and number two I'll put it on number one the AC frequency is in the um, overhead and hit that's this thing here and it's 380 to 420 is the range and we're and it's about uh, 397 uh, so that's fine and the AC volts is 105 to 120 so again as long as you're somewhere in the middle here you're, you're pretty well okay the DC loads parallel that just means basically make sure that these are both the same the avionics master power is this one now so we're turning on the all the instrumentation the console EFES power is was this one here wasn't it so if I just go up a bit you should find see the electronic flight information system spring into life and we need to turn on the trim power which is that one and four taxiing checklist off blower well they're not they're, they're no one in the back avionics check and set um we are we're going to be clear to I would say six thousand initially that will do and 
flight controls check so that means basically left and right backwards and forwards and rudder pedals in and out make sure that everything's working fine FMS load the flight plan so we go there we go to flight plan let's go to menu and go down to delete the flight plan so let's have a quick look now there's all the flight plans that we've got available I'm going to push the cursor and then go down and we're going uh, Mike Charlie here we are to Lima X-Ray Golf Bravo so that's the one that we uh, wanted wasn't it and there we are Echo Golf Mike Charlie Lima X-Ray Golf Bravo so I'm going to call it a day there for this recording. We've done quite a bit, haven't we? We've um, done a bit of we've problem solved everything. Every problem solved everything. We problem solved everything. Uh, we've done audio. We've done video. We've done how to problem solve X plane when it won't start. We've had to problem solve joysticks that don't work, and we've done how to problem solve engines that won't start and we've done creating and loading a flight plan and also uh, how to go through a checklist so have fun with your own checklists uh, please do and if anyone wants mine you're welcome to it for what it's worth I'll probably uh, still be still be working on it but I'm going to sign off for now and then um, hopefully if um, this uploads okay I'll upload it and upload um, another one uh, which will be the flight to Gibraltar. I'll see you then.